Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at an electro potentials a set of questions, question six, and this is from paper one, June 2018 for the AQA exam board. Now, as always, there's a ton of crossover between exam boards, but I'm going to focus on this one specifically for AQA. Um, so let's begin then. Um, a student set up a cell shown in figure two. So we have this typical cell um, here with our copper, copper two plus half cell on this side and another identical or almost identical copper copper two plus cell um, and we've measured an initial voltage of 0 0.6 volts at uh, 25 degrees celsius now remember electro potential is always done to this uh, sigma symbol here standard conditions so we have to remember that the uh, temperature pressure and concentration are always standard conditions for these cells. Now 25 degrees Celsius happens to be our standard condition of 298 Kelvin. They're exactly the same. Um, now we haven't looked at pressure because there's no gas present so we don't really have to worry about that. The only other thing is concentration and we'll come on to that in a little bit. Now this is, I'm not going to explain every little detail of electro potentials within this question. Hopefully you should have a foundation of knowledge which we can build upon um, and explain throughout the questions. So this one's real easy, this one marker. Explain how the salt bridge provides an electrical connection between the two solutions. So this is simply normally a piece of filter paper soaked in potassium nitrate solution. And what that does is it allows ions to flow from one beaker to the next. Okay, so that our answer would here would just simply be ions can move through the salt bridge. Ions can move through the salt bridge. Okay, really important here to say ions and not electrons. Just try and remember that for electro potentials. Let's focus on ions here. Now, next question, we're getting through this real quick. The standard electro potential for the copper 2 plus copper electrode is this right here. Now this is reduction, gain of electrons. The standard for electro potentials is always to make the forward direction of the equation, the reduction, and we have a 0 0.34 voltage here. So positive when compared with the standard hydrogen electrode. Now we need to calculate the electro potential of the left-hand electrode in figure two. Okay, so hopefully you just remember this equation. So if we do our electro potential of the overall cell, which you may see written as EMF, this is going to be our, the electro potential of our right hand cell, uh, the right hand side, minus the electro potential of our left hand side. Um, and it's asked us to calculate the potential of the left hand electrode. So this is the thing that we're looking for. So we're simply going to have to input our values, rearrange the equation and solve for this right here. Now, the alternative equation I prefer is redox. So the electro potential of the half cell that's being reduced minus the electro potential of the half cell that's being oxidized. Okay, I prefer this, but normally by convention, the left hand cell is going to be the cell that's oxidized. So that it's always useful to know that. So then if we just put this in, our electro potential of our cell is given to us in the question to be 0.16. This equals our right hand or our reduced half cell, which is going to be the 0.34 then. And that's going to minus our electro potential of the oxidized cell, our left hand cell. I'm just going to call that X here. So then if we rearrange this, it's going to make X the subject. We're going to simply have uh, that go to this side, the 0.34 minus 0.16 minus 0.16. And that gives us a value of 0.18. Okay. So then this cell here is 0.34. And this still is 0.18. So in the next question then, why are these not the same? Because you think by looking at it, you think, okay, they're the same copper electrodes. They got the same copper solutions. Why aren't they the same potential difference? Now, both electrodes contain a strip of copper metal in a solution of aqueous copper two plus ions. State why the left-hand electrode does not have an electro potential of 0.34. The reason for this being is focus on what is different between these two. It's the concentration. And remember I said that standard conditions, this juicy sigma symbol here that we always have to remember throughout this, as well as in enthalpy change, um, this standard condition symbol. So what is our standard conditions for concentration in chemistry? Exactly. So that's going to be one mole 
per decimeter cubed, which is what we actually have here. So that's the reason they're not balanced, is because this one here is not going to have the same potential difference due to the difference in concentration of copper 2 plus ions. So all we'd put here is that the concentration, I'm just going to put it in square brackets, copper sulfate. The concentration of copper sulfate is not one mole per decimeter cubed. Okay, so that would be nice and number one mark right there. So there's only three back-to-back -back one markers, not, not many marks right here. So let's move on. So we have to give the conventional representation for this cell in figure two, include all state symbols. So it's always a good idea, even if they don't ask for the state symbols, to include it anyway, because it is important for these conventional cell diagrams. We always want to separate the phases by a single vertical line. So if there's a phase change, we need to make a note of that. So the way I like to do it is always start in the middle. I like to start with the salt bridge and then work out, uh, work outwards on both sides for this half cell and then this half cell. I think it makes things a bit easier, but however you like to do this, up to you. So as always, the most oxidized species is going to be closest to the salt bridge, and that is going to be aqueous. Now we're going to have a phase change here between the solution and the copper electrode, and that's going to be a solid. So we have to make that vertical line right there. We're just going to mirror this on the other one because they're identical half cells. So I'm going to have a copper two plus as the most oxidized again. Phase change, copper solid. Okay, so that would be our one mark right there. Not many marks, <laughs> they're pretty stingy, aren't they? All right, so when the voltmeter is replaced by a bulb, the EMF of the cell in figure two, yeah, remember I said you may see it written as EMF, that's exactly the same thing. Um, it decreases over time to zero volts. So just how the concentration of copper two ions in the left-hand electrode changes when the bulb is alight. Give one reason why the EMF of the cell decreases to zero. So we have to, we have to answer both stages of this question for our two marks. So then, this voltmeter here has an incredibly high resistance. So it essentially doesn't let the ions flow. But when we remove this and we replace it with a bulb, we're going to get the current flowing and the ions moving through solution. So what actually happens is we have to remember which cell is oxidation occurring and which cell is reduction occurring. And the way to remember that I find the most useful is just simply no problem. Now I'm going to write the rest of the problem in a lowercase like that because that's not important what we're focusing on is the NOPR okay so the negative electrode the net when comparing two half cells this is one this is the other the more negative half cell is going to be oxidized and the more positive half cell is going to be reduced so in this case we know that this one is 0.34 we already wrote it up here and this one is 0.18 so I'm gonna let you pause the video for a second and you gotta say okay which one is being oxidized and which one is being reduced Fantastic. So this one is more negative, therefore this is oxidized, and this one is more positive, therefore this is reduced. So what is going to happen here? So this, if it's reduced, we're going to primarily get the copper is going to, the copper two plus is going to gain electrons, be reduced, and we're going to get the copper solid. And then on this side, it's going to be oxidized. So we have to flip the direction of the reaction. So we'd get our copper solid is oxidized to our copper two plus plus two electrons. So what's going to happen here? So the change in concentration of copper two ions on this hand of the electrode is this one right here. If this is the aqueous copper two plus ions and we're having primarily the oxidation occurring, therefore the concentration is going to increase. Hopefully that makes sense. The concentration will increase because we've got oxidation occurring. Therefore, we're gonna have that ionic solution increasing in concentration. Next, we have to say, what is the reason why the EMF decreases to zero volts? The reason is that if we let this reaction just carry out and just leave it be, eventually the concentration of copper two plus ions is going to reach a constant, in which case they're going to both be equal. So that would be our answer here. So the copper two plus concentration, concentration um, in each solution eventually becomes equal. Eventually becomes equal. Okay. Also, you could think about it uh, via diffusion because this is a salt bridge. It's going to allow the, the flow of ions through it. 
Um, this has a lower concentration, this has a higher concentration, therefore there's going to be a natural diffusion for these ions to move to a state of lower concentration here. Um, so that could be an alternative way of looking at it, a bit of biology knowledge in there. Um, so then, that's all, oh, how many marks is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six marks, so that's pretty savage, isn't it, for all that working out, but... Um, that's unfortunately the thing that we face in chemistry with these smaller topics. They like to chuck in loads of one and two mark questions that can really soak up a lot of your pressure's exam time. So then hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm going to be putting out more videos as much as I can before these 2022 exams. So if you've got any topic suggestions, drop it in the comments below. Like the video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future content. Best of luck in your upcoming exams. Peace.